Hello, welcome. This will be a slow and long video with many timestamps to help you navigate the video to specific parts just in case. But I'll be showing you how you can optimize assets and even let you in on some model cleanup techniques I use. This is our photo scan window we did last year. And I have accidentally forgotten to optimize the asset in our construction site pack. And as you can see, there are four material slots being used up as well as almost being at 1 million nanotriangles. triangles. This is bad. Avoid this. And so I'll show you how you can do that yourself with either a third party asset you bought or your own photo scan meshes. Now right click the mesh, asset actions, hit export and copy my settings. Compatibility can be 2020 and the export source mesh needs to be enabled. Everything else can be disabled and ignored. Once we have that done, we'll go ahead and grab our textures. Now, if you create your model, then of course, just use the textures from your explorer where you have imported it from. However, if you're dealing with an asset pack, then locate the textures, right click and bulk export to the models folder. This will extract the entire directory to that folder. The FBX file and the folder which contains the textures within its deep rabbit hole, as you'll see soon enough. Yep, all here. Okay, open Blender and import the model. If you now direct your attention to the top right corner into the outline panel, I'm going to duplicate this model and call one of it the source mesh. Export this immediately and save it. It's very important to keep your source mesh archived. Copy and save these export settings as I go. If you're exporting a model for Unreal Engine 5.5 and above, then go into your geometry setting and set your normal soothing group to face instead of normals only. And enable tangent space too. Awesome. Now let's make sure that we apply the transformations for these next steps on both meshes by pressing Ctrl A and apply transformation. All right, let's fix up the materials on these models. And before I even start, enable the node wrangler. It's built into the plugin within the add-on section. Once you have that, open the material shading graph, highlight principle BSDF, and while holding Ctrl and Shift, press T, and select your model's textures. Make sure they're properly named with underscore albedo or diffuse and underscore normal, along with any other PBR map you may or may not have. This part is sped up, but I'm just comparing the material names to textures and assigning them correctly. All right, now as we head over to the mesh, we're planning to optimize. Just go ahead and remove all the material slots and create a new one. Open the new shader and create a new texture image. Call it T underscore your mesh's name underscore albedo. I'm going to go with 4K and alpha should be off to reduce texture memory cost in megabytes by 50%. Now, if your mesh is not a high poly reconstruction or was created digitally, then it's unlikely that you need to reduce your polygon count, which in that case you can skip this chapter, otherwise continue. Okay, now let's try to decimate this model down to around 15 to 25,000 polygons from 800,000. Alright, so we have a problem. The mesh is disgusting. We'll need to clean this up. Atrocious topology, but honestly no one really cares since this photoscan mesh will use Nanai anyways. I'm gonna break my model apart slightly. You don't have to follow along with this part depending on your model. But now I'll remesh the model to bring back all the details and then some more with clean quad based topology. Use the slider nice and slow, otherwise the blender will crash. I wouldn't reach that 200,000 ish mark on the bottom right. Apply and inspect this incredible topology. And then we'll massacre back down with a decimate modifier again. Perfect. We have our edges back and the artifacts are gone. 
I went ahead and did the exact same thing with the smaller window piece, to which you can see here sped up. Control and J to join them together and the mesh is ready for texturing. A quick comparison as well. It is a massive improvement already. Now let's jump into our, our UV editing tab and do a smart unwrap on the optimized mesh. Just follow my settings or whatever that works best for you. However, I'd recommend looking into better pay plugin alternatives cause the smart pack is garbage. But it does a job regardless. Okay, this will do. Back on the viewport, let's double check our object properties, scale and location should be set on both. Okay, now a very important step is often overlooked, and that is to make sure the UV maps in your data panel have correlating names. Make sure they match, otherwise it won't work. Heading into the scene options with the camera icon, I'm going to set the render engine to cycles and make sure my device is GPU compute. Scrolling down, open bake, and change the bake type from combined to diffuse. Then disable direct and indirect lighting. You only need diffuse enabled. Then scroll down more and activate select it to active. And set the extrusion to 0.01 .01, and you're ready to bake. Select the source mesh first and control left click the optimized mesh afterwards in this specific order. Then head down and press bake. And there we go. Now, what to do if you made a mistake or forgot something? Go back to your source mesh, adjust materials, and bake again. It's that simple. This is also why I told you to archive the source mesh near the beginning. Open the material you wish to edit and add in your nodes which in my case is color correction. I'm making the new adjustments and bake it back out. The adjustments are done. I've rebaked the model and here I am comparing the 800,000 polygon mesh to the new 42,000 polygon mesh with seemingly no difference. Now if your bake didn't work, then try switching the bake type from diffuse to glossy and try again. I'm going to export this mesh from Blender and overwrite my original export from Unreal Engine. Again, same export settings, and if you're exporting a model for Unreal Engine 5.5 and above, then go into your geometry settings and set your normal smoothing group to face instead of normals only, and enable tangent space too. Without this, you'll experience artifacting on the model. Now I'm going to go back to the shading tab. You can swap viewports with this small little button here in case you get lost, or just bring up the tab with the texture results, and I'm going to save the albedo map alone. Make sure you have the right texture selected. Click on image, save as, export it as PNG, RGB, 8-bit color depth, and zero compression, and then the albedo map should be saved in your FBXs folder directory. You can also export normal maps and roughness maps the same way by changing the bake type and adding more image textures to the optimized meshes material. But I do want to give a shout out to Materialize by Bounded Box Software, a free open source PBR texture creation program where you can turn any albedo map into a full PBR set. I've copied my directory to a texture, so I only need to open the diffuse slot, paste directory, and open the albedo map. Then create a height map, adjust it, and then create a normal map just like that. Set to JPEG, flip normal Y, and export it as a normal map. And there we go, a perfect normal map. Jumping back into the engine, here we have the original, unoptimized and very resource heavy model. Right click and re-import with new file, and find a new model, 
an import. Awesome. Now let's double check it and set up the material for it. Looking at it from the editor, it's the right one and everything seems to be working. I'm going to duplicate a material instance and swap out the materials for the optimized mesh. Then I'm going to import the textures, feed it into the material instance and apply it to the model. And there's a problem, the colors are bad. Don't worry, just go back to Blender, Source Mesh, Adjust, Bake, and when you save the texture, just override the albedo and return to the Unreal Engine. And back in the engine, simply right click and re-import the albedo texture. And that's it. Hmm. The uh, colors are a bit dark on the bottom edge. Simple. Once you get used to it, it gets easy. But feel free to save this video in case you ever need a reminder. A quick side by side in terms of quality. Obviously the one with 800,000 polygons will have insane detail, but it's a window. We really don't need micro splinter level of details. That's a bit ridiculous for a game engine, especially for something like a window. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you got stuck at any point in this video, leave a comment and I'll respond as soon as I can. And you can also connect directly with me on Discord if you wish to collab, need advice, or just to socially connect. Link to my public server is in the description of this video. Thanks again.